Families across Minneapolis have been having some tough conversations this week after an attempted abduction outside an elementary school. Thanks for joining us tonight. The child involved escaped, but now, two days later, the suspect still hasn't been caught. The incident has led to discussions in classrooms and homes, maybe even yours. But the days of the stranger danger talk have evolved. And Lindsay Sievert is here with one main takeaway to get you started. Lindsay? Yeah, we have lots of advice, and I just want to be really honest here. So this is my child's school. So when this happened, we were really forced to address this really quickly. And I wasn't really sure, did, you know, did, did I do this properly? Mm -hmm. And has the advice changed since the days when Jacob disappeared? Mm -hmm. So we went to the Jacob Wetterling Resource Center uh, for more advice. And what they told us is that, yes, the advice has evolved since those days. And, you know, the most effective approach isn't exactly stranger danger, but teaching kids to be smart, not not scared. I first check in with my parents to see if it's safe for me to help. At the Jacob Wetterling Resource Center, as a former classmate of Jacob and a parent herself. It's called I Can Play It Safe. Allison Fay wrote this book, Safety, a lifelong chapter. So often when I'm teaching parent classes, people are so afraid to have this conversation. A little more than 100 stranger abductions happen in the U.S. each year. And after this week's attempted abduction outside Lake Harriet Lower Elementary. So these types of cases are rare. Allison well, wants I mean, families to remember one no phrase. Work. We don't go anywhere with anyone who doesn't let us check first. She tells kids, listen to that uh-oh feeling. If you sense danger, make a lot of noise and find a grown-up to help. And so teaching kids to yell from their gut, the same part of their body that makes them feel unsafe, stuff like call 911. Statistically, most grown-ups don't hurt kids. So if a kid picks any adult at random um, to help, they're in a much better place than feeling frozen and isolated. Allison believes every kid should have five trusted grown-ups in their safety net. And it's helpful if grown-ups practice what-if scenarios with kids. The more that we can, you know, reinforce, yep, we have a plan. We know our plan. We're on top of the plan. And a really good book for parents is called Protecting the Gift by Gavin Nebecker. He does a great job of going in specifics and using a lot of what-if scenarios to help equip kids. And last, take to heart words from Patty Wetterling. So it's one that I just echo from her is that you're special and no one has the right to hurt you. Every kid is special. Every kid deserves to be safe. Well, Allison told me part of the reason that stranger danger approach doesn't work very effectively is because kids don't easily identify who is a stranger. Mm -hmm. You know, what does a stranger look like to kids? They really think it's like the, the person in the alley with a trench coat, right? Right. right? right. And so that's why, you know, we talk about that, that uh-oh feeling, that gut to telling them those trusted grown-ups. So I thought that was really interesting. And again, most abductions are by someone that the child knows in the U.S. Right, right. So. She's great. I love mm -hmm. that advice. And I love her saying, too, statistically, most adults are going to help you. So just find an adult. Yeah. Don't worry so much. Right about finding the right adult, just find another adult. Yeah. Um, one quick, quick thing I see a lot of parents talking about in the forums about creating a family password or a family, mm -hmm. you know, code word. Yeah. And so that is an advice that they gave me on a brochure too. Like, what is your family password? Yeah, that great. trusted adult, do they know that password? All right, good conversation. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so much, Thanks, Lindsay. Lindsay.